Erev Tov Rabotai, we're continuing with our Mishnah Yumi, Mesechet Bikurim, we're up to Perek Gimel Mishnah Aleph. Today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baib, Neliyao Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. Most of this chapter describes that Bikurim are designated and brought to the temple and what is done with them there. The Mishnah begins, Ketzad Mafrishin Bikurim. How does one designate Bikurim? Yored Adam betoch Sadeo veroet tena shebikera. A person goes down into his field and sees a fig that is the first to emerge. And the Midrashim point out, this is the stage when petals of the blossoms fall away and the budding fruits can be seen. And the Midrashim explain, the Mishnah now is describing the per- preferred way to perform the mitzvah. If someone failed to designate Bikurim when his fruits were still attached to the ground, but he waited until after they were harvested, he can make the designation then, as the Rambam writes in the Chod Bikurim chapter 2, Alecha 19. Also, if someone failed to mark the first fruits and he doesn't know which ones they are, he can designate any of the fruits as Bikurim. So again, the Mishnah says, Yored Adam betoch sadeo v'oret tena shibikera. A person goes down into his field and sees a fig that is the first to emerge. Eshkol shibiker, or a cluster of grapes that is the first to emerge. Eimon shibiker, or a pomegranate that is the first to emerge. Koshro begemi, he ties it with the reeds so that he will remember which fruits they are. And the Mephoshim explains it, Tosfid Yom Tov says, he may mark it with anything he wants. The Mishnah mentions a reed only as an example of something that was commonly used. Ve'omer are'elu bikurim, and he says these are bikurim. The Rabbi Shimon Omer, but Rabbi Shimon says, Afal pichen, even if he did this, even if he said that they are bikurim, Chuzer v'kure otam, me'achar she'italshu min ha'karka. Chuzer v'kure otam bikurim, me'achar she'italshu min ha'karka. He must call them bikurim again, after they have been detached from the ground. And the Rav brings down the Rabbi Shimon and Tanakama, they learn their respective opinions from Psukim and the Torah. And the Rav tells us, Venercha ki Rabbi Shimon, the Alecha does not follow Rabbi Shimon. That is in the of Mishnah Aleph. Mishnah Bet now continues an introduction. When bringing Bikurim to the temple, many people would travel together instead of small groups or individuals traveling on their own. By performing the mitzvah in a large group, they honored the one whose commandment they were observing as the Pasuk in um and Tanakh says in Mishlei, chapter 14, Pasuk 28, Berov Am Hadrat Melech, with many people is the glory of the king. The Mishnah describes now how the communal journey would begin. Ketzad ma'alin at the Bikurim. How do we bring the Bikurim up to the temple? Kol ha'ayarot sheba ma'amad mitkansod la'ir shel ma'amad. All the people who lived in the towns of the local Ma'amad, which we will explain, they gather in the main town of the Ma'amad, meaning the town in which the leader of the Ma'amad lived. And let us explain. The Kohanim and the Levi'im were divided into 24 groups that were called Mishmarot, literally singular Mishmar, each of which served in the temple one week at a time. The Israelim were divided into 24 groups called Ma'amadot, singular Ma'amad. Each Ma'amad of Israelim were, was linked to a Mishmar of Kohanim and Levim. When the time came for a particular Mishmar of Kohanim and Levim to serve in the temple, the corresponding Ma'amad of Israelim would go to the temple and attend the services of the public offerings. The Ma'amadot were established for the following reason, the Mephoshim say. A person who brings an offering is obligated to attend its service in the temple. So that accordingly, every Jew would have to be in the temple every day because offerings were brought each day on behalf of the entire Jewish people. Since this was impossible in practice, split into a different ma'amad of, um, split into a different ma'amad of Israelim would represent the entire nation each week. Some members of the ma'amad actually attended the temple services, while the others gathered in their towns, where they fasted and prayed on behalf of the nation. When the time came to bring the Bikurim, the members of each ma'amad would gather in one town, they were joined there by the corresponding Mishmar of Kohanim and Levim, and they would travel from there to Yerushalayim. The Mishnah continues, Vilanin she'ir, They would sleep overnight in the town square. Velo ayu lebatim, they would not go into any houses so that they would avoid becoming Tameh, because we know the Rav says a dead body that is under a roof transmits tumat, any people, items of food, and utensils that are under the same roof. So if those bringing the Bikurim would go into a house in which there is a corpse, they would become tamen, would be forbidden to enter the temple. So to avoid this problem, they would sleep outside in the town square where they were not covered by a roof. And in the morning, the appointed person, meaning the leader of the Mahamad, he would say, 
Kumu v'na'ale Tzion el Hashem Elokeinu. They have bit in a parenthesis. I'm skipping the parenthesis. Kumu v'na'ale Tzion el Hashem Elokeinu. Rise and let us go up to Tzion to Hashem our God. A pasuk in Yirmiyahu, chapter 31, pasuk 5. Now, the Mifashim ad, the reason I skipped the word bayit, the word bayit doesn't appear in the pasuk, and therefore it's deleted from the Mishnah, it's in parentheses. Now, the Mifashim explained, as they traveled, they would recite the, the verse, Shehle Ma'alot, the Song of Ascents, I re, uh, ascents, I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of Hashem in Tilim, chapter 122, Pasuk 1. When they reached Yerushalayim, they would say, our feet were standing in your gates, Yerushalayim, that's uh, verse 2. In the Harabite, in the Temple Mount, they would say, hallelujah, hallelujah, bekutsho, right? Praise God in His holy how, in His holy place. That's uh, chapter 150, Pasuk 1 in Tilim. In the Temple Courtyard, they said, every soul should praise Hashem. That is in Pasuk, uh, chapter 115, in Pasuk 6, as the Rav tells us in the commentary, umrim, on the way that they would say, Samachti li bet Hashem nilech. When they got to Yerushalayim, they would say, And then in the Harabai, in the Tema, they would say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, And in the Azara, in the court, they would say, Kol Neshmat, Hallelujah, etc. And that is the Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yemi. Baruch Adonai Amen v'Amen.